Jeremiah chapter 33. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison. So Jeremiah is in jail. He's in jail for the word of God. And he's taking it right. Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, who established it. The Lord is his name. So what's, what's God's name? The Lord. I am. Jehovah. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. So you better be careful when you say, Oh Lord. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. You're calling upon God's name. I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. That's the word of God. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, Jerusalem, and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, the palaces, which are thrown down by the mounts, that's the army. They build little hills to get up and over the walls, and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men. Go ahead and fight the, the army. God is working with the enemy against his people. So going against the Chaldean army, you're only going to make Jeremiah's prophecy of the Lord even more so. Because Jeremiah mentions the sword, famine. Well, when you go against the, the Babylonian, the Chaldean army, and you get killed by their sword, all you're doing is fulfilling God's word. By your rebellion. Because they're fighting against the Chaldeans thinking God is wrong. That we're going to win, and we're going to conquer, and we're going to remain in our sins. But you don't. Whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury. That's God. God is love. Somebody today in the street, or Jesus is love. And for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. God is love, yes, but God is holy. How would you like to go to heaven and end up with the same mess we're in with today? Would that be heaven? Would you like to go to heaven and have one man rule the entire beings of all and then die and set up another ruler by smoking out a window or whatever you want to do and have a whole bunch of uh, people under authority that you couldn't trust your, child, your children with. How about that? Is that the heaven you want? How about a heaven or whatever you want to call it where there's only a certain amount of people, say 144,000? And that black people, you know, they're a downcast. Is, is that the heaven you want? As you spend all eternity going door to door to door to door to door. With a perverted Bible. Are you, is that what you want for heaven? Because that's sin. And that's your God of love. When you get to that heaven of your loving God. That doesn't put down sin. I mean would you really like to get to New Jerusalem. Get your mansion. And find out that Charlie Manson is living next door to your house. Would you really like to do that? Would you really like to be in a place of heaven where people don't order the law, the police, and the courts? All these things God, all these sins God has to judge because he's a holy and righteous God. Do you know what is in New Jerusalem, New York, the new earth and the new heavens? There is no more sin. Where is it? It's been cast into hell either by Jesus in, in the gospel or by your own personal works that you think you can do it in religion. We're going to eternity where God will be angry no more. Why? Because there will be no more sin. God is cruel what he's doing to Judah. God didn't do nothing. He, hasn't Jeremiah been warning them? 32 chapters. Isaiah has been warning them. Moses warned them. Joshua warned them. Noah warned them. Didn't they learn from Adam? Behold, you know, I will bring it help and cure and I will cure them, and will revile unto them, reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. That's after the beating. 
So when you take your child and you pro you provide correction to that child. Now me, I explained before the, the, the correction. But the Bible way is you, you correct them, then you take them aside, you give them peace and truth, and you reveal to them why they were punished. But even Jeremiah has been telling them all before the punishment. This is what? This is what's going to happen. You tell that child, you keep on doing it, it's going to happen. You keep on doing it, it's going to happen. And it did happen. And when it did happen, God said, okay. Remember why I told you. You know, when you tell your children, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is okay. 33 chapters. You better do what you tell them to do or they ain't going to believe nothing. God has been long suffering, but the Bible says in between, uh, no, not in between, uh, in B times, often correction. I will call, you listen. You bring them health. You bring them cure. You, you reveal to them. You give them peace and truth. You don't beat them. You don't correct them just to be mean. You do it with a loving heart. I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. They will build them as at the first. Does that sound like God's all done with them? I mean, America is is does is, is all finished with Americans. How do you say that? They don't want to cure you. They want to they want to limit your health care and provide something you can't afford. And if you can't afford it, you can't afford the health care. God says, I'll put wounds on your behind and I'll take care of you. I will cleanse from I will cleanse them from all their iniquity. Only God can do that. Whereby they have sinned against me. Who do you sin against? God. And when you're dealing with a soul as I've done in the last few weeks, when you talk about sin, you better tell them, listen, it's not just you know you stole a cookie from mom. It is you have sinned before God. And I will pardon all their iniquities. In order to get a pardon, you have to be guilty. Listen, if they're not guilty, you better not go any further with the gospel. Whereby they have sinned, whereby they have transgressed against me. Romans 11, 26, Acts 3, 18. All have sinned. And shall be to me a name of joy of praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, the Jews. That's not going to happen today. You think if God showed a unique kind of blessing, whatever it could be, you think it's something terrible and wonderful and great that God could do to the nation of Israel today. You know that would anger the entire world. If Israel came up with a pure cure that cost $1.99 to end all cancer in the world, somebody would find a reason to launch missiles into them. If Israel could come up with a, with a thing that all your children would, will live right and do right and be obedient to the day they die, somebody would say, hey, that's our land, and they go in there and move the walls even more. But here God is saying, listen, I'm going to cure him. I'm going to put him back in the land. And it will be to his joy, to his praise, and to the honor. And all nations shall be pleased. Ooh. Those are the nations that helped the Jew in the, in the tribulation that allowed into the millennium. Those are the people who really loved the Jews. And didn't do it for God because they had no idea that when God says, listen, because you helped me, because you've done this for me. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? Which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. They shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto them. Unto it. Excuse me. So here is judgment upon the land. But here is God ultimately, finally, giving the nation of Israel a complete blessing of all blessings. And the nation is like, whoa. 
God's goodness causes them to tremble. How do you explain that? I have no idea. Because God's goodness to the Jews in Egypt caused the fear of the Egyptians. They got to the point, get out of here. They got to the point, they went up to Pharaoh, the magician, and they said, listen, will you just let these people go? Don't you see we're destroyed? No one came up to the Jews and said, God's blessing you. God is taking care of you. Let me be a Jew. That hasn't happened yet. But we read over and over in Isaiah and Jeremiah, there's going to be a time when Lord Jesus Christ sits on this earth and David, see, they're going to come up, the Jews are going to head to worship the Messiah and people are going to stop and say, hey, can we go with you? You are the Jew. You are God's people. We want to learn from you. We want to be where you're going to be. Let's go. It's not happening today. Nine out of ten Jews that you ask the way of salvation, the way they're going to tell you something wrong. Thus saith the Lord again, there shall be heard in this place, Jerusalem, which ye shall say be desolate without man, without beast, nothing, nobody around, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, nothing, without man, without inhabitant, and without beast, emptiness, the voice of joy. The voice of gladness. The vo Wait a minute. Just say it was desolate. If, it, if there's nothing, no one there, how do you get the voice of joy? How do you get the voice of gladness? Ezra chapter 3. When they're back in the land. The voice of the bridegroom. The voice of the bride. The voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good. For his mercy endureth forever. What's the mercy endureth forever? He's got them back in the homeland. Ezra and Nehemiah. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord's going to be destroyed. By the end of Jeremiah. By the end of Ezra, the house of the Lord is rebuilt. And guess who walks in that house? Now let me take let me take a real quick over here with the dates. Ezra. Taking a guess. Article. Nehemiah. Ezra, 457 BC. They're about BC 450. Guess who steps into that land about 450 years later? The Lord Jesus Christ. The voice of the will say, Praise the Lord of hosts. Hosanna, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endures forever, of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. You know they were doing it because they were they were selling turtle doves, they were selling the doves, they were selling the animals that needed to be, because Jesus went in there and kicked all the tables over. They were exchanging the, the temple money for, for real money, real money for temple money. They were bringing sacrifices. Mary bought the, the, the sacrifice of a poor woman to have her child uh, uh, circumcised the eighth day. She brought a sin offering because of the, she was a sinner for giving birth to a male child. It was animals. John the Baptist's father is in the holy place uh, offering the incense. When he's visited, for I will cause the return to captivity, captivity of the land, as at first, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, again, in this place, Jerusalem, which is desolate, without man, without beast, completely empty, and in all the cities thereof shall be an habitation of shepherds. Where do you, where do you see that one? Matthew, when Jesus Christ is born, and the angels speak to the shepherds of all occupations. In Bethlehem, causing their flocks to lie down. 
and in the cities of the mountains, and in the cities of the vale, that'd be valley, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin. And why is he mentioned? Ju we'll see Judah, but Benjamin and Judah. Twelve tribes, you could pick any name in Benjamin. Gee, I wonder why Benjamin was mentioned. Bethlehem. And in the places about Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that telleth them, saith the Lord. The shepherds are coming back. And we find him in Matthew. Behold, the day has come, say the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel to do the house of Judah. Notice he performs here. He doesn't perform to do an artificial thing. He, do, he performs something of the word of God. There are people today in churches that do a performance. They change their names. They change their occupations. They change their identity. They change who they are for a show. God performs in nothing in lies. It's all about his words, all prophecy. It's all that's going to happen. In those days, at that time, will I cause the branch, capital B, of, the, of righteousness to grow up unto David, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land, the millennium. The second advent and the millennium. In those days, those days that the branch is in Jerusalem, shall Judah be saved. Not now. And Jerusalem shall dwell safely. Not now. And this is the name wherein she, Jerusalem, shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. And we've seen many names of Isaiah and, and Jeremiah that this city has been called and will be called. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the thrones of the house of Israel. Well, we already read a prophecy directed to the whole world, earth, earth, earth. Write this man, Kaniah, that he will be childless, seedless. None of his seed shall be on the throne. So you just saw the prophecy, the Lord Jesus Christ, of the virgin birth of being of David by Mary through Nathan, his son, and not Solomon. Jesus Christ is a great, 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 great grandson of David, not through Solomon, but through Nathan. By who? By the virgin birth of Mary. His adopted father, legal adopted father, was of David and Solomon and the king. Neither shall the priest, as the Levites, the Levites want a man before me to offer burnt offering. So in the millennium, the Levites are going to be there. They're going to be working. Oh, it's a millennium. It's a time of rest. There'll be no work. No, sorry, it's not American Labor Day. Only in America on Labor Day do people not work. In the millennium, they're going to be doing the service of the temple. That they're going to be offering the burnt offerings and the meat offerings to do sacrifice continually. Ezekiel 43, 19 and 44, 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah saying, Thus saith the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, Go ahead, break it. Have the moon and the sun switch, all the sun. Say to the sun right now, okay, sun be way, moon show up, let it be dark right now and night. You can, you can do that. Then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant. Now listen, upon 20 and 21, how can you say that God lied and say he's all finished with Israel? Have you broken the day and night? No. Then you are lying when you say God is all finished with Israel. That he should not have a son to, to reign on his throne. That son will be the Lord Jesus Christ. And with the Levites, the priest, my minister. You know who's going to be serving before the Lord Jesus Christ? The Levites. Who are the Levites? They're the priests. Who's the high priest? Jesus Christ. How do you like that one? 
the high priest is king. The king is high priest. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered. Go ahead and try to count them, NASA. Neither the sand nor the sea be sea measured. Go ahead and try to try and measure it. Marine biologists and all that. So will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister unto me. You, may, you see how many Jews are going to be? In eternity? You can't count them. And like the stars, God's going to know every single one of the name of them. How's that for a God? He's going to know all the stars by name and all the Jews by name. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying again, here's another thing. Consider thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord has chosen, he has even cast them off. Israel and Judah. Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. That is exactly what some churches are saying today. About BC 590 is telling you what is going on in, in 2015, 2000, 1900, 1800s. There are going to be people who are going to say, God's all finished with them. Right there. What churches do that? You don't need to know. Just know that God said it. God jumped from B.C. to, uh, to A.D. and told you what's going to be said. Thus saith the Lord. Alright, you think I'm all done with the Jews? If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, now you find that in Genesis 1. Where, you know, the sun and the stars and the moon were made for signs, seasons, time. Go back in and check it. There are certain seasons you can't grow crops. There are certain seasons if you went swimming in the ocean, you freeze to death and die of hypothermia. There are times, except for in America, that you put your head on your pillow and you go to sleep. Without no distraction of light. And there are times when, when that when that light comes through the window and pops you an eyeball, it's time to get up. Unless you're in America. Or a big nation country. Big cities. If you can break what God has said about day and night. And they're trying to. 24-7. We'll, we'll, we'll have greenhouses. Yeah. By the word of God through through Joshua, God Joshua said, Tell that son to stay still. That son stayed still. Uh the king. Isaiah, you tell God to tell that son to go back fifteen degrees or ten degrees. You know that that was such astonishment. Guess who shows up? Babylon. And guess who guess which God they came to of all the gods in the world? Uh, God of Israel, yeah. What on earth did you just do up there? Oh, you mean the ten degrees? Yeah. Of all the gods in the world, we came to your God. Can you do that? If you can do that, then will I cast away the, the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob. You can't do it. But God is forever going to be with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If anybody teaches God's all finished with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are lying, they are false prophet, and they're sure not going to want to stand before the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I would hate to have God stand in front of my face and call me a liar before all the world. So I will safely say anybody who messes with Israel, they're going to get a curse. Anybody that helps and prays and tries to do something for Israel, to the best of your ability, they're going to get a blessing. You don't mess with the Jew. 
if a Jew were to do me wrong, I would say, Lord, you saw that. I ain't taking no action at all. Help me to take no action at all. I don't care if it's a lawyer. I don't care if the police. Whatever it is, Lord God, I don't want to curse. It's in your hands. For I will cause their captivity to return. They're in captivity today, by the way. The Bible says they're going to return and have mercy on them. He ain't gonna have mercy on you when he's when you, when you call God a liar. You know what I mean? 